Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise. Another day to always give him the glory. Another day to always magnify and shout at his holy name. Because he is king of kings. Yes, he is. And he is Lord of lords. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. And today is the day that God is going to speak to someone today. Today is the day that someone will give their life over to Christ today. And I want to welcome all my sisters and brothers and all newcomers to the Lord. Take over ministries. This is Servant Minister LT. And I'm so glad, I'm so blessed, and I'm so honored to fellowship with all my sisters and brothers around the world, around the globe, around the universe, because God is about to move in this place right here today. The Holy Spirit is about to move through this place right now today. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still watching over you, my sisters. He is still watching over you, my brothers. And he is always watching over me. So I just want all my brothers and sisters, wherever you at right now today, just to stop doing what you're doing right now. And just to open your mouth and give God some thanks. Give God some praise. Give God some glory in the house of the Lord right now. If you're in love with Jesus. Give Jesus some praise right now. Let him know that he let him know that you are his everything. Let Jesus know that you always thinking about him. Let Jesus know right now that you always praise him as long as you have breath. You're going to praise him. You're going to glorify him. You're going to magnify and you're going to shout out his holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God is coming for you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, for another beautiful Awesome day today, God, that you have given me and my brothers and my sisters to come together today, Father God, to seek you, praise you, glorify you, and always put our faith, our trust, and our hope in you again today. This is the day, Father God, that you're doing new things in your daughter's life. This is the day that you're doing new things in your son's life. This is the day that you're doing new things in my life. Heavenly Father, God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, seeking you, praising you, worshiping you, and glorifying your name and always putting you first place. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God. Oh, God, we know that you're about to move through this place right now. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my sister's life today. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my brother's life right now today. Father God, I am asking you to do a new thing through my life right now today. Father God, I'm asking you to touch and heal right now. Father God, let your presence be known through this place right now. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word that we better receive today. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful anointing message, God, that's going to keep us full and satisfied throughout the whole day. We just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, and what you're about to do. We just thank you, Father God, how you about to lift us up right now. Oh, Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will, that we are available to serve you and honor you and magnify you, that we are available for you, Jesus. Father God, I'm asking you to do something like you've never done before in your house today. This is your house, God. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. 
the house, it cannot be moved and it cannot be shaken at all. And God, we here right now today, Father God, as servants, thanking you, praising you, and glorifying you. And I believe today, Father God, that someone will be saved. The angels already have about to have a party in heaven because someone will get their life over to you today. A soul will be saved today. And God, you get the thanks for it. God, you get the praise for it. And God, you get the glory. And God, we just come before you. I want to say thank you. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. And we give you all thank, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's get into this word. I want to talk about today. I want to see God's glory. I don't know about you, my sisters. I don't know about you, my brothers. But I want to see God's glory. I believe I have some sisters in the house today. She is expecting to see God's glory. I have some brothers that's in the house today. He want to see God's glory. But not everybody want to see the glory. Too many people are in a rush for things. But I'm here today to speak to my sisters and my brothers. I'm not in a rush for nothing because I have no room for mistakes. And there are some people right now today that's in this house using the rush for something. And by you being in the rush for something, you made a lot of mistakes, didn't you? You made a lot of dummy moves, didn't you? Things didn't go the way that you thought it was going to go, now, didn't it? It didn't pan out the way that you thought it was going to pan out because you was in a rush. But if you'd have waited on God, if you'd have waited, then you would have seen the glory of God. But no, nobody can tell you nothing. You thought you were Speedy Gonzalez. You want to go ahead of God. You ain't had time to wait. You was in the rush. You said, this got to happen now. But I'm here today to tell you, God is an on-time God. Mm -mm -mm. God is an on-time God. He is never late, and he is never too early. I don't know about you, but I know for a fact, I know what the word says, that God is an on-time God. That means he, he, mean he's going to deliver on time. That means he's going to bless on time. That means he's going to open up doors on time. That means he's going to put you at the right place on time. That means he's going to elevate you on time. On time. That means he's going to do new things on time because God is an on time God. He's an on time God. And if Jesus is not in the rush, why are you in the rush? The first thing, we're impatient. That's number one. We're impatient. Number two, we want it right now. When you know good and ready, good and ready, that you're not ready for it. I know if God would have told me what he's going to do for me right now, I know I'm not ready. But some of y'all, y'all think that y'all ready. And you know good and well, good and well, that you're not ready for it. Third of all, you think that you are God. You think that you can do this. Without God, before God, you think that you can make things happen on your own. And whenever you think those three things will end up happening, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. You hit your head on the wall. Things don't go well. Things don't work out. Things don't pan out. In the moment when things don't go your way, what is the first thing that we do? We call on the name Jesus. Jesus, what happened? Jesus. Why you let this happen to me? And Jesus said, I ain't let that happen to you. You let that happen to you. Jesus said, I was not in the rush to get you to where you want to go. You was in the rush. Jesus said, I'm patient. You was impatient. 
Jesus said, I am God, but you thought you were playing my role. You were trying to play my position. So Jesus said, I'm going to step to the side and let you play your role because I know that you can't play my role, but you wanted to play my role. So I thought that you knew better than that. Too many people didn't wait on God when it was time to get married. You just went out there, oh, I got to marry him. Oh, I got to marry her. And when you didn't wait, what happened? Y'all hated each other. Everything didn't go well, right, the way he wanted to go. Because why? Using the rush. You just thought marriage was a good thing. You wanted that title. You didn't wait on God to prepare the marriage. You didn't wait on God for the answer. You didn't wait on God to give you the okay. You told yourself it was okay. You told yourself that you was God. You told yourself, I'm going to marry her no matter what God say. I'm going to marry him no matter what God say. And God said, go right on ahead then. You'll come holler at me later. Two months later, three months later, a year later. Guess what you were doing? Hollering at Jesus. Jesus, I need to holler at you. And Jesus said, I already know what you want to talk about. Come on, tell me. I made a mistake. I hit my head. A lot of y'all make mistakes by, by jumping jobs when Jesus never told you to leave that job in the first place. You just thought that job paid four or five more dollars more than what you're making right now. And the moment that you went over there, it didn't last but a month or two because you and the supervisor didn't get along. You realized that the grass wasn't green on the other side. You realized you couldn't get your way over there like you did at the other job. Now you're going back to the other job, knocking on the door. Hey, I need my job back. Can you rehire me? They say, no, the position is full. Then what you do? God, what happened? God, I don't have no job. God, I don't have no money. How am I going to pay my bills? God, how am I going to eat? God say, using the rush. Using the rush. If you were just waited, you would have seen my glory because God is an on time God, but you can wait. Now y'all moved to a different city. No God told you to wait. You just had to go because somebody told you about that city. Somebody told you about that state. Somebody told you, I think, I think that you are right fit down here and you went on it. And the moment that you went on it, you realize things weren't going well. Now you're down there stuck because the person who told you the state moved down there. Now they left. Now they went back to somewhere else. Now you're down there look, looking crazy. Don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Don't know how you're going to eat. Don't know how you're going to survive. And the first thing you do, hey, Jesus, I need your help. But I'm not in the rush. There's too many prodigal sons. There's too many prodigal daughters right now. It's in the rush for something. And every time the prodigal son and every time the prodigal daughters or every time the prodigal wives and husbands are in the rush, you always make a mistake. But I'm here today to tell somebody I'm not in the rush. But I have no room to make no mistake. I'm waiting on God because I want to see God's glory. I don't know about you today, my sisters. I don't know about you today, my brothers. But I want to see God's glory. How many of my brothers today? How many of my sisters today really want to see God's glory? How many? Just put your hands in the air because I want to see his glory. But the, the only way that you're going to see God's glory, you have to wait. You can't be in a rush. If you can wait and be patient and not be in a rush, the word of God said that you will see with your own eyes his glory. Because why? God is an on-time God. He's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. He's a powerful God. I don't know about you today, but I want to see his glory. Amen. Look at the prodigal son. He was in a rush for his inheritance. He thought he was ready. Knowing good and well, he was not ready for that money. The moment that he got it, 
He was broke less than a month. Then he had to go eat with the pigs. Broke, hungry, homeless. Didn't know what to do, stomach growling. The light bulb came off and they said, I know I wasn't ready. I was in a rush. He made some mistakes. He made a lot of mistakes. I made some mistakes before because I was in a rush. There was a time I was wanting a job. And the job I was at at that time, I didn't like it. It didn't pay me what I was worth. But it was a job right down the road. It was paying me what I wanted. I didn't wait on God. I prayed. Praying is the easy part. It is the waiting. I couldn't wait. I thought I was God. I couldn't wait. I was impatient. I couldn't wait because I was in a rush. The moment I went down there, everything looked good. Everything looked kosher. I lasted that job a week and they let me go. Then I had to sit in the house for a whole month and a half. Then I had to wait on God. I had to wait on his answer. I had to wait on this move. Then at that time, I said, God, you ain't never got to worry about me being impatient anymore. God, you ain't got to never worry about me being in the rich no more because I'm going to wait on you because I know that you're on time, God, because I have to see your glory. You can't be in the rush, my sisters. You can't be in the rush, my brothers, because every time you're in the rush, you're always going to make mistakes. You're going to fall, you're going to fall, and you're going to fall every single time. Come on, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody going through it right now. Somebody that's got this this came back from the hospital, but now it's all on their forehead because you was in the rush. You was in the rush to buy a car. Oh, I gotta get this car right here. I ain't, and God said this, if you just wait, I'm gonna show you the car, what I have for you. But you didn't you didn't wait. You had to get that car because the outside looked good, but you didn't know what the inside looked like. The car broke down two months later. Now here it is, you got car repairs and car payment. Then you can't do both because you didn't wait. You didn't wait. You have to start learning. Have to wait on God. You have to learn how to wait. That's the only way you're going to see God's glory. And that's the only way you're going to see what God is going to do because God is an on-time God. Come on, somebody you ain't telling me nothing. Let's go to John 11. And we're going to read verses 11 through 17. And we're going to go finish off at 40 through 43. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. John 11. Verse 11. We'll stop at 14. Then I'm going to go to John 11, verse 40. I'm going to finish off at 43. Amen. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking on his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. See, at this point right now, Jesus was not in the rush. Jesus was not in the rush to go see his friend. Jesus was not in the rush to go save his partner. Jesus was not in the rush to go handle business. Jesus, I got something else to do. I'm going to handle that work, that light work later. But I'm not in the rush to go there because Jesus had to take precaution. He had to listen to his father on what his father had Corrected him and directed him to do. That's why he wasn't in the rush. That way I say, I'm going to holler at my partner later, but I got other things that I have to do because why? Jesus was listening to his father. Jesus, Jesus also had to wait on his father for his father to get him the green light. And that's what exactly that we have to do. We have to learn how to wait. Jesus was not in the rush. 
because Jesus didn't have no room to make no mistakes. He didn't panic. He said, I go holler at my partner later. I know what I'm going to do with that. I know. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was, was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? There's too many of us act more like Martha than Mary. Martha was in a rush. Mary was patient. Come on now. We all have been like Martha, but less of us has been like Mary. Martha was in the rush. That's why she ran to meet Jesus first. Because she was in the rush. She was ready to open her mouth. She was ready to tell Jesus, oh, but Mary said, I'm going to sit still because I know I'm going to see God's glory. I know God is an on time God. We have to be more like Mary, my sisters, my brothers. And less like Martha. Martha was making a mistake. Martha didn't even believe, didn't even realize what was about to happen. That's why you cannot be in the rush for nothing. And every time you want to be in the rush, you're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. Situations going to come up every time you're in the rush. You have to learn how to be patient. You have to learn to wait on Jesus. You got to learn how to wait on. If he's not in the rush to get to you, you shouldn't be in the rush to get what you want from Jesus. He already going to do it for you, but you got to learn how to wait. You got to learn how to be patient. You got to learn how to trust. It is procedures and processes that you got to take for all the God to come through. It is procedures and processes that you got to see for all the God to come through on the on time God. It is procedures and processes if you want to see the glory of God. Some of y'all think the moment that you pray about it, God's going to give it to you the, the same second. No, it does not work that way. Praying is the easy part. It is the waiting that you got to wait on. And you cannot be in a rush for something if you want. If you want it, if you believe it, you got to sit your tail down like Mary and say, I'm going to wait on God on this one. I don't care how bad and how agitated I'm ready to move. I don't care how bad or agitated I want to do this and do that. I'm going to wait on my God until he give me the green light. I'm going to wait on my God until he give me instructions. I'm going to wait on my God until he tell me what I need to do. It's too many of y'all right now today. You are so impatient. Yeah, pray, God, is he really my husband? God, is, he, is she really my wife? And the moment when God don't answer you, you say, oh, God ain't got time for me no more. So I guess I need to go sleep with him. Oh, I guess I need to go sleep with her. And the moment you do it, what you end up with? But nothing. But nothing. Then when you end up with nothing, who you got to go back to? God, I thought you said he was him. God, I thought you said it was her. God said, I never told you anything. I stayed quiet. You was in the rush. You made those dummy moves. Now you got to pay the price. You got to pay the price for what you done. You got to pay the price for the mistakes that you made. You can't blame nobody else for that dummy move but yourself. And God said, if you just sit there and just waited on me, you would have seen the glory, but you didn't believe in me enough. Come on, somebody. That's why a lot of y'all don't see God's glory. That's why a lot of y'all do not make it to the promised land because you couldn't wait. You was in the rush. 
like Moses. He was hard headed then listen. And here it was, Jesus put his arm around his neck and said, this right here is supposed to be for you, Moses. But Joshua going to take your place. Joshua, they didn't put in no work. Joshua, he didn't do no sacrifices. Moses started it, but Moses did not enter into the promised land. Because he's in a rush. God told him to do one thing with the rock, but Moses wanted to do his own way. And Jesus, I never told you to do that. He said, I told you to speak to the rock. Moses wanted to hit it. Jesus, I never told you to hear. I told you to speak to it. And by you being disobedient, you believe in the word say, because you didn't believe in me enough. You would not enter. A lot of people right now today, because you didn't believe in Jesus enough, that's why you didn't enter into your promised land. The reason why you're not getting things the way that you're supposed to get right now, because you didn't believe in him enough. So now, you're going through it. Now, you're paying the price for it right now because you're in a rush. This is the one time I said, God, I'm not going to be in a rush right now. I have no room for no mistakes. I'm going to wait. I don't care how bad I want to do this. I don't care how bad I want to do that. I, I have no room to make no dummy moves because at the end of the day, I want to see God's glory because God is an on-time God. And I know how faithful and how merciful you are. For order me to see your glory, I have to sit here and wait. I got to be patient. I got to learn how to be like Mary because I was at one point in my life, I was just like Martha. Hollering at you every second. God, what is that? God, what you doing? But then I had to learn to sit there and sit still and know who you are because you are an on time God. You are a faithful God. You are an amazing God. You are a powerful God. You are a mighty God. You are, oh, help me, Jesus. You are a big God because I want to see your glory. Tell, some, tell somebody today I want to see God's glory. Let Jesus know right now that they say, Jesus, I want to see your glory. But you got to say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 40. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, my brothers and sisters, you will see the glory of God. See that? He said, if you believe, not him, if you believe, my brothers, if you believe, my sisters, if you are not in the rush, if you can wait and be patient. He said, if you believe in that, he said, he promised you, my sisters. He promised you, my brothers, that you will see the glory of God because he's our own time God. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for, for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hand and his feet wrapped with stripes of linen and the cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off those grave clothes and let them go. Now, do you see they saw the glory of God? How did they see the glory of God? They waited. How did they see the glory of God? It was not in the rush. No room for no mistakes. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who Jesus is preaching to today. But if you want to see the glory of God, you cannot be in the rush at all, my brothers and sisters. There's no room for mistakes, my sisters and my brothers. You have to learn how to wait and be patiently wait on Jesus. And if you can learn to wait and be more like Mary, he promised you right here that you will see with your own eyes the glory of God. And I really don't know about you today, my brother and sister, but myself, I want to see God's glory. I want to see God's glory through everything I'm going through, everything I've been patient on, everything I've been waiting on. I want to see God's glory pan out through all of this. 
That's why I'm sitting here just like Mary. Yes, sometimes I get fidgety. I'm going to keep it real with you. But I'm learning more and more to be like Mary. I know how Martha was because at one point I was too fidgety and jumpy like her. I started making moves and mistakes like Martha. But I realized when I did that, I had to pay the price. So then when I realized what I did, I had to sit still and settle down and act and be more like Mary because I can't afford to make no dummy moves or no mistakes like that. I can't do it. And if you want to see God's glory, sit still and know that he's God. And if this word is for you, you know God is talking to you. Tell God right now, I'm not in a rush. Let Jesus know right now, I'm not in a rush. I have no room for no mistakes. Because God is the on time God. It's the point I'm making. Did you say how on time it was? See, he was never in a rush to go see Lazarus. But he knew he was gone. But he had to wait. Look what he said. Father, thank you. That means he had to, he had to hear and get instruction from his father. That means his father was coaching him and guiding him and directing him how to do it. And right now, that's what Jesus is doing. He is guiding you. He's directing you. He is preparing you for that next level, for that, that, for that next step. That's why you're waiting. That's why you're patiently waiting. Because you're going to see God's glory through all of this. Because God is an on-time God. Look how he came, came right on time. So everybody can see that Lazarus will rise again. So whatever it is that's dead in your life, my brothers and my sisters, it will rise again. Because God, glory will be shown through all of this. God is an on-time God. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you. They come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. By us praying this simple little, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us. Lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek Him. Always honor Him. Always praise Him. Always put Him first place. Always put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus. No matter what. Always keep your eyes focused on your Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow sisters and brothers. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. It doesn't matter do you speak to them on an everyday, daily basis. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer. My fellow sisters and brothers, the only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This serving me in the CLT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.